have somebody up. I got out of bed to be here, so I got to be able to be, you know, uh, stand up and give you a pat on the back. Um, so listen to what he has to say. He makes a lot of mistakes like I did. He's learned from all, all of his mistakes, and he, oh, and, he right. and he doesn't do no very very well with his clients, right? He sure. does. He does an amazing job of turning a no into a yes. And with that, one of the top brokers in the company. I feel like save the applause for later if the content is any good. You can <laughs> you can be the judge of that. I've been do doing real estate since 2007. I do virtually everything real estate representation related. New construction, vacant land, flips, luxury, condo, penthouses, fixers. I've been a top 1% agent in America seven years in a row. I am a managing broker at Skyline Properties. I've been called to testify as a subject matter expert in court cases before. I say these things not to brag. Some of us know each other. Some of us don't. I hope that I'm qualified to be in front of you today. I waived my usual fee to be here because I love Skyline. There is a secret in real estate that no one ever talks about. And some of us were talking before class. Some of us got here an hour early. It feels I've observed from across the country, 17 years of real estate work, that sometimes brokers don't share things. And I try extremely hard the exact opposite of that. In fact, we've got all this technology set up. My contact information is not hard to find. Uh, maybe someone wisely doesn't have their email open here. I'll get my contact information up again in a second. I invite you to write it down. It's not hard to find my contact information. If you have any questions or thoughts, as maybe a couple people have already said, I try extremely hard to be an open book. I've taught this class in some format a couple hundred times. Um, I invite interruptions, unlike maybe when you're in a classroom in elementary school in the team, like raise your hand or whatever, maybe because we're used to it, feel free to raise your hand, except if you think of something, please interrupt me. I will either directly answer it immediately or we'll put it up on the board that's already full uh, and write it down and I'll make sure to get it. Maybe an hour of content, maybe as much Q&A as y'all want. I don't have an appointment personally after this. I have some concrete takeaways for you. You're going to be disappointed when I tell you the secret that no one ever talks about it because uh, you probably have heard it before. Maybe just not in the format that I'm going to use to share with you. Anyone have questions and thoughts? We do, for those of you online, have Melissa monitoring online. You can chat and or holler. I'm near the speaker. I might hear you if you talk, if Cameron's given you the ability to speak online but please interrupt with any questions. We're monitoring the chat. You can drop it in the chat and then she'll interrupt me. Any questions or thoughts before we begin? Of course, the first person to raise his hand, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Oates. Will the Seahawks make the playoffs? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'd rather talk about UT as opposed to the Seahawks. Um, I did go to the University of Texas at Austin, Hook'em Horns. Um, I feel like my life has been divided into two parts. I had a scholarship. An athletic scholarship. I only won three NCAA Division I champions there. Anyone want to take a guess? Don't guess if you know the answer what sport I won three NCAA Division I championships. 18 time All American. Yes. Don't guess if you know. Yes. It's not chess. Is chess a sport? Ping pong? Uh, I don't know if that's a varsity sport at any school. Pickleball. Water putt, pickleball. <laughs> it's swimming. It's, I, you know, swimming. Uh, I did the mile, 66 laps. I worked out six hours a day in the pool. We also did dry land running, uh, weights, whatnot. What other questions or thoughts before we begin? The class is for you. So I mean it seriously when um, I say interrupt me. I've taught this so much. I, do, I don't have tons of no handouts, very few visual aids. So please interrupt when you go. Here's the secret. I'm going to illustrate, in fact, the secret with two scenarios. I'm going to, instead of talking about real estate agency, no big deal, uh-huh. Uh, we want this is fine. I'm gonna tell you a story. My dentist is a client of mine. She is a tenured professor at the 
number two dental school in America. That's the University of Washington. I need to find a new dentist because she always has her students clean my teeth. This is a true story. And I have like good teeth, I guess. I don't know. Go jeans. And um, she always gives yeah. me her worst students because my teeth are easy. And it's been like a decade now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Sana, you got to give me some real like eh. <laughs> dentist. Number A is the best it's in the world incredible. at, let's say, what we think of as the work of a dentist. Let's call it cleaning teeth. Give Give, and of course, give, we all know that dentists don't clean teeth. Then, I, I, hygienists. That's fine. Stick with me for the scenario. Dentist A, best in the world at cleaning teeth and worst in the world at attracting patients to their practice. This is not a trick question. Let's say there's a second dentist. Let's call him or her. I don't know. Dentist B. He or she is the best in the world at attracting patients into their practice. And let's say they're the worst in the world at the work of being a dentist. Let's call it cleaning teeth. Dentist B cannot keep the doors from flying open with patients pouring in. The dentist B works on their teeth. The patient leaves, their teeth are bleeding. They leave a horrible review. I'm never going back there. But remember, Dentist B is the best dentist in the world at bringing patients into the practice. So the bad reviews don't even matter. Dentist B is drowning in business. People are paying him or her money one time because they never come back. They hire a receptionist to maybe make the check-in process smoother. And they're seeing as many patients as long as they can working all day long. Dentist A, best in the world at the cleaning teeth. They don't have any reviews online. Why? Because they're the worst in the world at attracting patients into the practice. This is not a trick question. I've taught this class many times. Which practice is going to be more financially healthy? Not a trick question. Yeah, it's not a trick question. Anyone should prefer, if they want to be a dentist, Dentist B's practice. They're the only dentist that has a chance to improve the work of being a dentist, let's say cleaning, because they're seeing, I don't know, how many patients a dentist can see in a day, let's call it 100. Maybe by the time they get to 20, that's probably the best they're gonna be able to do that day. And then from there, it's even downhill, it's worse than the first 20 patients, but they at least have a chance to get better at the being of a dentist. And maybe because they're drowning in business, they could hire dentist A, stay doing not only at what they're best in the world at, but probably what they love. That's how they got to be so good, which is attracting patients to the business. Dentist A is doing what they love. Maybe that's why they're best in the world at the, you know, the teeth. And they come together and be better. This is the secret that no one talks about in real estate. I would hope that you're here because you want to hear what the secret is. And when I tell you that the secret is you must lead Jen, it's a huge letdown because surely you've heard that before. Yeah. Lead Jenning is the only thing that matters to being an effective real estate agent. Is that true? Of course not. You have to know how to write a contract. You have to know how to show homes. You have to know how to negotiate. Of course that's true, but you have no chance to improve your skill at anything. If you can't learn, be taught, if you can't do the work of attracting clients to your business. Most of us in this room are independent contractors. We don't have a boss. Can you help me out with me being able to draw on paint, please, while I keep talking? Uh, I need to be able to like free draw. Okay. I've done it before, it's real easy. On the track. Yeah, or, oh, it's because it's not touch screen. If I can just do it on the trackpad, that's fine. Yes, you should be able to. Great, thanks. That's where I was missing it. And, oh, yes, right, on the trackpad, right. Here we go. Uh, I have concrete takeaways for you. Roughly an hour of content. I will call out the concrete takeaways. It's up to you if you have more or less takeaways. You might think my takeaways suck. I might have left out. I have two versions of this class. This is what I call Real Estate Representation 101. Um, I left out of my bio. Did I say I've been called to testify in court cases? Yes. Uh, a recent year, one calendar year, I did 120 million in volume across 160 transactions. 
if you are not good enough to do 3% of 120 million in your head, then real estate representation 101 is too advanced for you. <laughs> Thanks for the chuckles. <laughs> this is a real life true story, okay? I'm gonna share everything that I know that I can in the most important things as deemed by me in one hour. And we'll see how it goes. I don't think the secret, I call it a not secret, is a secret. I just like to be explicit what? about it. Yes. No. If you can't lead gen for your business, you will fail as an agent. This is not a commercial for me or my team. I do like teams. I have a team. I lead gen for a lot of the agents on my team so that they don't have to. And that's not a bad fit either. But for those of us that are solo, independent agents, the most important thing to being successful, if you want a chance to succeed, you have to lead gen. And what I'm going to share with you works for me. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. The next thing I've never seen anywhere, it's not unique to hear a real estate agent say you have to lead gen, true or false, I don't know. I'm just going to get a little bit more specific than I see. other. I've never seen anyone do what I'm about to do. No one's excited because you don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I think of, and I'm going to stay focused on the buy side, real estate representation as gears in a car. Does anyone remember like a standard? The first gear, I'm not going to write because we don't have a touch screen here. Gear number A or one is get a client. And I normally say there's no wrong way to do that. And in light of some recent things, which is not recent, happens all the time, don't do it in illegal way or a way perhaps that will cost you your license. Some people know what I'm talking about. This would be maybe, we shouldn't even talk about it, soliciting an active listing. Don't do that. That would be a wrong way to come up with a client. Gear number one of a buyer real estate agent is get a client and there's no wrong way to do it as long as you do it ethically. This is going to be the focus of the class, how to get clients. Gear number two, once you've met someone who wants to buy a house today, that was a lot that I just packed into that. Once you've met someone who wants to buy a house today, the next step is to find out what type of house they want to buy. Common questions, we all know what they are. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? What neighborhood? Parking. Do you want a fence? Do you have pets? Who will be living there? How many people? Find out their criteria to shift them to gear number three, which is find a house they want, they look looks good enough to them that they want to tour. We've got three gears on me calling them six. We're halfway there, get a client, find out the type of house they're looking for, find houses that they're excited enough to go tour. Every single one of these gears is dramatically different work. I've worked across the country in real estate. Northwest Multiple Listing Service as a nonprofit is one of the best MLSs nationwide. I don't work for them. This is not a commercial for them. They rock. Do you know who they put first because they're nonprofit? Most of us have only ever worked in the Northwest Multiple, right? Is that fair? Most MLSs nationwide, did you guys know, are for profit. Do you know who a for profit company puts first? Not a trick question. Themselves. Absolutely. A for profit company. In a capitalistic society, or in a capitalistic society, we're not going to talk about politics, puts themselves first. Northwest Multiple is nonprofit. Who do they put first? Client. They put principals first, buyers and sellers, and they rock at it. And they're able to do that because they're a nonprofit. Who do they put second? Brokers. Professionals. Agents, appraisers, inspectors, a little bit, mostly agents and appraisers. And then who comes next? After principals, buyers and sellers. And they, the Northwest Multiple does stuff on purpose. After then, agents and appraisers, who do they put next? Themselves. Then themselves. Our software sucks. We use the industry standard core logic. This is the Northwest Multiple. It sucks. I have an entire class on gear two, shifting to gear three, how to be good at our core logic software to find the right property for a client. That's not the focus of this class. Have we ever done it? I do it with a lot of agents. 
every single one of these six gears is a separate skill. Today's class is going to focus on gear zero or one because you have no chance to be a successful, wildly successful real estate agent if you're not world-class at attracting customers, clients to your business. We're going to focus on it. But the point to this Jim Pullen original is every single gear matters and it takes skill between zero and 100 to be good at every single gear. Does anyone see where I'm going with this? Get a client, get their criteria, you got to be good at manipulating our horrible software, Northwest Multiple Rocks. Don't tell them I was bad-mouthing the software. It's not theirs. They pay a subscription to CoreLogic. What would the goal be to go from gear three to gear four? Okay, you're very close. Get a client, get their criteria, enough to find a property that they want to go tour. The point of touring a property, of course, is to get into a contract. Year four. Writing a contract takes skill. I teach a class on how to write contracts. I think Skyline teaches a class once a month on how to write contracts. Who's taken that class? I sure haven't. I teach a class on it. You know what's a great way to get good at writing contracts? Teach a class on how to write contracts. I'm extremely good at writing contracts, partly because I teach a class on how to write contracts. I see contracts as a list agent. I submit contracts as a buyer agent. There is skill involved. You can be 0% good. You can be 100% good. Our first interruption of the yes, day. Yes, can someone move the camera in the room so we, we can see Jim's skill? Heck yeah. I Nobody wants to see Jim. Know. Maybe they want to hear Jim. <laughs> There's considerable skill involved in writing a contract. There's considerable skill involved in negotiating a contract so much skill involved that there's like certificate, there's multiple certifications on negotiating. We've all seen them, right? The CNE, Certified Negotiation Expert, and then they have different levels. And has anyone taken those classes? Okay, I have. I don't have the letters at the end of my name because that's what I think about it. <laughs> gear one, find a client. Gear two, get their criteria to gear three, find a property they like enough to tour. Y'all, I'm gonna show you, I'll just go ahead and tease you right now. This is not the time to do it. Oh, uh, we're missing one attachment. And it was of course the one attachment that I wanted to go, do. We'll, we'll do it in a second, it's okay. If the only thing you did as a real estate agent, eight hours a day, two days off a week, that would be a dream, was show buyers, how many contracts do you think you'd have? If you were, if you were in, the, what was that? Everyone. Yeah, you'd have them all. If you were in the cars, what I call it, showing buyers 40 hours a week, you'd have tons of contracts. Um, I did have a slide to show. This is my calendar. We're going to come back to this because I like time blocking. And it is, it is, I think, impossible to do 160 transactions in a year and not be organized. That's not the focus on this class. Find a client, get their criteria. You got to be good at searching in the MLS. Our software sucks. <laughs> the point to showing, if you're not showing uh, to get to make an offer, you're doing it wrong. Not a trick question. What's the number one rule of sales? Number one rule of sales. Whether follow through is a great rule. Um, Clients always is, great. It, again, please, online. Customers always right. Clients always right. Also, so good that you often see that published at like restaurants or shops. The number one rule of sales as taught as taught to me by me is ABC, always be closing ABC, the ABCs of sales. You always ask for the sale. Let's again, let's not talk about dentists. Let's not talk about real estate. Let's talk about a television salesman at Best Buy. A person comes in, the salesperson has the worst presentation about the television ever on the planet, ever. It's the worst, back to the dentist, the worst. That customer came in probably intending to buy a television. And if you simply say, what do you think? Can I box it up for you? Literally a third of the time they'll say yes, they've already made up their mind. Person comes in, buying a television, best presentation ever. What do you think? Can I box it up for you? Studies show that people say yes, no, maybe almost exactly a third of the time. If you find a client, I'm going to keep doing this, by the way. 
get their criteria enough to find a house they want to go tour. There's skill involved in every one of these steps. If you show a home and don't, I'm not very pushy at all. I haven't given you, we're going to do a little bit of scripting. I haven't given you my 30 second bio. I kind of did at the beginning. I don't tell clients now's the time. This is the one ever. If anyone, has anyone ever not shown a house? Okay. Hopefully no one online. If when you leave the house, you probably know if they liked it or hated it. And you are an idiot if they clearly hated the house and you said, what do you think? You want to make an offer? That's not what I, you should do. But you absolutely, if you're gear threeing and you don't solicit feedback, designed to help you help them find the one, then you're doing it wrong. Hey, Melissa, I could tell you hated it. I could only pick up that you hated the backsplash. Tell me what you hated about it. That is what I think of as our version of, if you don't ask for the sale, you're doing it wrong. You don't have to ask for the sale by saying, yeah. that house that has you in tears, it was smelled so bad. Do you want to write an offer? You'll lose your job quickly. The, uh, find a client, get their criteria, show them homes, write an offer. Huh. Gear five is everyone's favorite gear. I call it closing. And contract to close is hard. On my team, we have licensed staff that does it. So if we think back to the focus of this class is going to be gear one, what's the most important thing for anyone if they want to thriving insert your business, whether it's a restaurant or a dentist office or a real estate uh, individual, contract to close takes skill. It is hard. A common thing I coach out is the more business you do, the more you're going to lose. Who here has lost a contract? You got in a contract and it didn't close. Who remembers their first? Yep. Everyone remembers the first that they lost. Y'all, within the past 90 days, I lost three contracts in one day. Three contracts in one day. This was a personal record. I hope to never beat that record. It was awful. The more business you do, the more you're going to lose. And it's not good to lose a contract. It is good to support our clients. That's the only thing that we should be doing. The final gear, I, I on a gym pull and original, keep it. This is where everyone, it happens. Agents get paid. Sellers are no longer the owner. Buyer becomes the owner. It's the hooray. And uh, since the class is actually two hours and I was thinking it was one hour, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff that goes into being an effective real estate agent that goes into being a world-class real estate agent. I will share with, with you before we actually get into the content. We're not even there yet. This is all like warm up. I'm just going to tell you about my closing gift process. Who has an actual formal closing gift process? Some people. It's good to have one. Uh, there's no such thing as good, bad, or ugly. Um, some of the most biggest real estate agents I know do a box of chocolates. That's a literal real life story. Uh, I don't even know if off the top of my head I can get it. I do not hand keys to clients anymore. It's one of the most fun things in my experience and my schedule doesn't allow for it. I do find that the client likes to run into the house with me for two hours. I just don't have the time. I leave a gift basket for the buyer. Uh, it's filled with local things, Teo chocolate. They're in Fremont. I don't know what else because I don't make the gift baskets. I have what I call a crash landing for them. Paper plates, plastic silverware, cups. If they drink, I do a bottle of champagne. I always do Gatorade. I do in a congratulatory card signed by me, a gift card to a hyper local restaurant that delivers toilet paper or paper towels. The point is, I'm not going to help you move. Moving sucks. Even if you pay people to help you move, you're going to be tired. You're going to be thirsty. You're going to be cranky. When that happens, I talk about it in the car. Food's on me. Order up the delivery. You don't have to unpack your plates. You've got it here. You don't have to look for a cups. So you got it here. That package costs less than a hundred bucks. We're going to talk about referrals later in class. I find that it leads to referrals. I then mail the client a gift almost once a month for one year. Some of the gifts are cool, like monogrammed custom welcome mats. 
I get lots of pictures from clients saying, thanks for the welcome mat. We didn't have one yet. Uh, framed portrait of their new home. I don't know what the other 10 gifts are because I don't like them. And also I don't do these. A company does it for me. It's awesome. It's not the best closing gift rhythm, rhythm, closing gift rhythm I've ever heard of. It's what I do. It's effective to generate referrals. Any questions before I actually get to the content, we're going to go back to gear one. It is skill. It is hard. If anyone ever tells you real estate representation is easy, I'm sure we've heard it. It's garbage. Um, in the six years there, where does your client getting like pre-approved fall? Yeah, it's a great question. I hear lots of people say, don't show people that aren't pre-approved. And uh, I understand I do it personally. I've been doing real estate long enough. I've never been a licensed inspector. In my car right now, I have more inspector tools than most inspectors I've ever met. I've never been a licensed lender. I try real hard not to tell people who hold a license that I don't how to do their job. Um, but I've talked to so many lenders that don't understand how loans work. I do. So every time I meet clients, part of my training for gear three, which could be the first face to face. And or if it's not, if you met someone in a mixer, that's how you gear one them. It might not be appropriate to ask very basic questions to figure out if they're qualified or not. My goal is always to shift gears. So going back to the number one rule of sales, always ask for the sale. A different way than what I talked about a second ago is to ask to shift to the next gear. What I mean by that, and I'm still staying on your question, I promise I'll come back to it. If I'm sending an email to someone or texting someone or calling someone, hey, did you see 1234 Main Street? Do you want to go tour? That's me asking for the sale to shift from gear two to gear three. I would always ask for feedback on why not. And... When I do my, it's not more, Jordan, than three or four questions. If I feel like it's a waste of our time because they can't either afford to buy a house or because they can't afford to buy the house they're looking at, I'll tell them, hey, I never pressure clients. I'm here for you when you're ready. I think you should talk to a professional about what your max qualification is because it's not about finding A, the one. Very quick aside, I always call it A, the one because there's always another the one. I work very hard to never call a house the one because then you don't get it. And then what's the client feel? Not think, what do they feel? Oh, we missed it. I always call it a the one. It's never about finding a the one. It's about finding a the one at the right time at the right price. A different way of phrasing that, if I showed any of you in this room a $10 million home, a $5 million home, if you could buy it for free, would you? You say, no, you're stupid because it's a $10 million home. So the whole point is to find A, the one at when it's active that they can afford and an easy way to encourage someone who I think needs to talk to a lender before I spend my time showing them is, hey, I don't want to show you a insert a more realistic number million dollar home. If the max you want to pay based on your monthly is 800, we need to shop at 800 because it's not a secret that a million dollar home looks better than an $800,000 home looks better than a $600,000 home. We're going to come to scripts. It's the second time I've plugged scripts. Literally everything that I say, including this class, I've said a bazillion times. And I think to myself, professionals, did Scott peace out? He's gone. Thanks, yeah. Scott. He's not going to be razz. I saw him. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be razzing me anymore. Uh, if we think of professionals, let's say the Seahawks. There is no chance that on Sunday morning, the first time they get down to execute a play is the first time they've done it. And it does happen to me 17 years into it that maybe once a year, someone says something to me and out of my mouth comes something I've never said before. Happens to me maybe once a year. And when I notice that that happens, I work on a script with my team or in front of a mirror or in the car when I'm driving by myself. The reason what, I, what rolls off my tongue sounds like I've said it a million times before is because I've said it a million times before. And another not secret secret of real estate is I only have about 15 to 20 things that I say to buyers and it's slightly different to sellers. And that's it. And I can practice that 15 to 20 things so that when someone's like, I know they're qualified at 500, they haven't talked to a lender, they wanna see an $800,000 house, I can effectively communicate to them in a fashion that they feel supported 
why we need to talk to a lender today without going to look at their house. And I, of course, always phrase it as, I'm not going to waste your time by showing you a home that's outside the monthly payment that you want to pay. So that's not a great answer. I'll show people all day long if I'm com confident in their approvability at that price point. I will always, 100%, neither good, bad, or ugly, this is the way that I do it, show someone one time even without a pre-approval. Because as it pertains to the gears, when you secure the face-to-face, -face, and oh, by the way, it's a little bit different, with, like where's the first face-to-face? -face? Could be here, could be here. You like look for properties together at a coffee shop, could be here. Uh, I sold more properties sight unseen during COVID, same as anyone, boy, is that, I don't like it. I secure the face-to-face. I try to remove any obstacle to the client not being able to meet with me face to face. I think I put on a pretty good show in person. And I do think of it that way because part of our job is to get the client to work with us, right? So I do anything I can to secure a face to face, including if it's a buyer consultation. And then past that, I might say maybe you need to talk to a lender first. What else for now? If you recall, part of my intro was I'm an open book. I haven't shared my contact information with you. I'm going to do it right now if anyone wants to, myself. Oh, terrific. Thanks. 206-429-5382. Some people are in heaven. My email address is complicated. It's Jim. J-I-M. My last name is Pullen. It's like push out, only pull in, D-U-L-L-I-N. You can look me up. My email is jim at realestategym.com. Reach out for anything. You want to come on a showing with me? Shadow me? That's great. You want me to shadow you? I tell people all the time, you can introduce me however you want. If you want me to come along on a showing with you and then provide some constructive feedback afterwards, I'll do that. And you can introduce me as your trainee. I don't care. I, everyone has an ego. I like to think that mine is small. I don't know. <laughs> I said I'm an open book. I meant it. How do we, how do we, how do we just get it the biggest? Did you jump into the call for it? Yeah. Oh. I did get a question from you too. When you're yep. Ready. I'm ready. What is the 15 to 20 things you want to talk about. We will do some scripts. I won't forget scripts. Uh -huh. I think it's hidden behind the thing. Okay. Every single transaction, seller or buyer rep that I've ever done in my my career has come from one of six lead generation platforms. We're finally to what I say is the content of the class only 40 minutes in. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. It's awful. Who, who is this guy? <laughs> Some people are writing, so I'm going to take a moment. You can take a picture also. hundred percent. This is not the beginning or the end of the list. There's no wrong way to do it if you ignore unethical, illegal ways. You have to do it. I have lots more to say. Here it comes. If you think to yourself, I didn't, I didn't pull the class and many people are online. Who's been an agent less than one year? Please raise your hand. Who's been an agent less than two years? Please raise your hand. Three years. Wow, some tenure, four years. If you think to yourself, it's time versus skill, like maybe this is how it goes, right? The longer you've been an agent, the longer you've been an agent, the better, oh my goodness, the better you become, right? Please, this is, this is one of the earliest questions I get from agents that are new or want to do more business. And probably everyone on this class is one of those two, new or wants to do more business. Please, for yourself, it makes no difference to me. Please, do not spend money. Not on lead gen, period. Because if you're new, today, 
is the worst chance you have to close someone. You'll be better tomorrow. Be better tomorrow after this class, let's say. Just like the next day you'll be better. And you need you. We all need to close. I don't know what the industry considers the number, but it's some number of transactions before you even have a chance to close a cold lead or then switching to lead gen in particular, an internet lead. You close lots of internet leads yeah. and you rock as a real estate agent. Outside of online leads, don't buy magnet calendars if you're new. You have no chance to close it. So you just wasted a bunch of money. Maybe it's not a bunch of money. Maybe it's just a few hundred bucks. I probably wasted sixty to $80,000 on lead gen efforts last year that I can directly say don't lead to a return for me. And uh, I can afford to. Also, I'm very effective at closing leads. So if I lost that type of cash and I was not happy about it, you can believe me on that, but I knew that I had a chance to close it and that's what my number looked like. Please, for yourself, if you're new, don't spend money. Spend as little as you can. Going back to the graph of how good you are over time is why everyone says as a new agent, work your sphere, work your family, work your friends. They're hopefully going to work with you no matter what. You have the best chances of closing them, And in other words. 100% of my transactions in I don't know how long have come from one of these lead platforms. We are going to focus on the first two. I am happy to talk about any of them, time allowing. We only have as much time as we, as we have. We're going to talk about the first two because they can be free in terms of money. Absolutely not free in terms of time. I'm going to go in reverse order from the top two that I'm going to talk about. And this is maybe the deepest I plan on going and dipping my toe into scripting. Don't have the calendar to show you on the screen. I showed you on my phone. Uh, most of what I do, I didn't come up with personally. Does everyone know the term R&D? Bose, they make speakers, make a big deal about advertising. They put 100% of their profits into research and development. Guess what? It's marketing. They, of course, have lots of profit that doesn't go to research and development. What? Why do they spend so much money on marketing? It's to attract new customers to their business. It's the first thing that matters. And of course, we all want to get better at writing contracts. I want to get better at negotiating and writing contracts. I have no chance to do so if I don't have someone I'm working with. If I don't have someone who wants to work with me, which is why I keep saying it, we're about to do it. I'm focusing on lead gen. My referral business changed dramatically when every time I meet a prospective buyer or seller, I say the following, hey, it's my goal to be a world-class real estate agent, which by the way is true. Sometimes when I teach this class, I stay 100% in character, sometimes I don't. I've already failed staying in character. It's my goal to be a world-class real estate agent. It actually doesn't matter to me if I think I'm a world-class real estate agent. What I care about is if you think I'm a world-class real estate agent. Part of how I'm going to measure if you think I did an outstanding job for you is by the number of referrals you give me. My average client gives me three. So the next time we talk about this, when you've given me zero, and by the way, you're happy in your new house, I'm going to think that you think I'm a horrible real estate agent. When you've given me six, I'm going to feel like you think I'm a better than average real estate agent. Did anyone count how many sentences that was or how long that took me? I say that to everyone that is thinking about working with me. And the reason I do that, I of course call it planting the seed, is because when we're done working, I bring it back up. I'm very specific with my vocabulary because I work on my scripts. I just said when we're done working. I didn't say when they buy a house or sell a house because I plant the seed of when we're done working, I'm going to to remind you of how many referrals you've given me. And if you've given me zero, I bring it back up anytime we're done. 
That doesn't necessarily mean transacted. How many of us in the past year have had someone saying, we're going to pause our search for insert the reason? We all know what those re interest rates are too high. I got laid off. I got COVID and I've been in the hospital for three months. The reason can be good, bad, or ugly. To me, I support my clients no matter what. When they tell me we're done working, I'm not going to buy a house this year, Jim. Cool. Uh, for the following reasons, I'll provide some feedback. I'll be supportive. I'll be helpful. Hey, remember what I said the first time we talked? When we're done working, I'm going to measure. I say the exact same thing. I'm going to measure how you think I did by the number of referrals you've given me. If you give me zero, it makes me feel like you think I'm a horrible real estate agent. If you give me six, it's going to make me feel like you think I'm terrific. You give me none because, by the way, they've always is given none. And then, but now that I planted the seed, whether that's a day ago or six months ago, they actually stop to think who's ready to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Who do you know that's ready to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? That could use the skills of a world-class real estate agent today. And when I started doing that one script, it costs no money and it costs almost no time. My referral business exploded. And I mean every word that I say when I do that, that script. Any feedback on the script? You want me to do it again? Yes. yes. Do it again. <laughs> it's my goal. It's my goal to be a world-class real estate agent. It doesn't matter to me if I think I'm good. It's stepping out of character. Go back to the dentist. Who cares if the dentist thinks they're the best? Who cares? No one's coming. It's my goal. This is just something I actually do. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's my goal to be a world-class real estate agent. doesn't matter to me if I think I'm a world-class real estate agent. What matters to me is that you think I'm a world-class real estate agent. It's important to me that you feel that way. The average client gives me three referrals. When we're done working together, I'm going to remind you how many you've given me. If you've given me zero, it's going to make me feel like you think I was horrible. If you've given me six, it's going to make me feel like you think I was like twice as good as average. I'm going to remind you of it when we're done working together. That's it. I do it with everyone I talk to, even before they're in the car. Because it lets me plant the seed. I have had people, when I do the plant the seed script, tell me I've got someone. And that's called asking for the sale. If we want referrals from people, what is wrong with those of you who don't have an on-purpose strategy to ask for referrals? You want the, Do you want the referrals? Then ask for them. You literally have to ask for them because studies have shown if you ask for the sale, no matter how bad your pitch is, do it the first time when you walk out of here and run into a friend or whatever. It could be the worst ever. One third of the time, they're going to give you a referral <laughs> simply because you asked. Maybe if you get better at it, the studies would show you'll get it more than one third of the time, right? I might be approaching half, probably not, realistically speaking. You got to ask for the sale. You want referrals? Ask for referrals. I'm not saying you got to do it the way that I do it. The other thing that changed my referral business was the, the, the best referrals are people who just closed within that first year that they own. And I just hammer them with gifts. And it's all automated, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, by the way, I think this is the first time I've talked about this. Why do I not worry about it? Because everything that I do, I pivot back to gear one. I'm very disciplined. I woke up for, I don't know, my entire adult life before real estate, four, five, six a.m. for swimming. I'm in whatever gear I'm in. I block my calendar. I have $6.4 million in escrow today. I'm going to lead gen about six hours today. I don't count this class as lead gen. I drove 30 minutes to get here. I got here an hour early. I'll stay an hour late. That's how much I work. It's not to say that you need to work a lot or you want to be part-time, that's great. Staying on the content, here we go. If you want to be a full-time real estate agent, it's okay if you want to be part-time too. If you want to be a full-time real estate agent, you should work 40 hours a week. And if you don't have properties in contract, if you're not working 40 hours a week, lead genning, you're not a full-time real estate agent. You're what I would call unemployed. I work probably over 40 hours a week in lead gen, no matter how much I have in escrow, no matter how many showings I'm doing, no matter how many hours a week I spend writing contracts. I am able to prove 
To who, by the way? Literally no one. My lead gen efforts to myself. I mean, that's yeah, for you. Your calendar. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, well, I can. We can show it to the group. Yeah, yeah. I might be a little. I mean, it's beautiful. This is just yeah. one month. This is just one month. I color coded. This is my actual calendar. I like blurred some out because of some privacy, whatever. I put everything I do in my life on my calendar. Oh, by the way, also I have no chance to be there if it's not on my calendar. Uh, some of my friends got upset with me that I like put like a fun night on my calendar and so I stopped telling them because they felt like you know marginalized because I was like well I, I can prove to myself because there's no one else to prove it to that I do 40 hours of lead gen a week I can prove it to myself there's no one else to prove it to but if you want to be a full-time real estate agent a challenge from this class I call it takeaway number one is you gotta lead gen 40 hours a week oh by the way if you want to be a crummy real estate agent that's fine 40 hours a week is great. Maybe you don't spend 40 hours a week in lead gen because you spend six hours a week here. That's showing homes, by the way. You wrote a contract for two hours or whatever. You negotiated, you closed. I literally wake up every day, look at my calendar, and I think to myself, what gear am I in when today? We're doing perfect on time. Yes. What do you do? How did you transition from, obviously you weren't always this organized or- Oh, <laughs> go on, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying- I'm so sorry, go on, please. From showing homes and or open houses, like how did you get yourself organized where you're only showing homes at a certain time? I'm sure at now you, your team, you're delegating, right? And you're not doing all the showings, but you didn't start that way. Some people on the team are on this call. And I know that they're just like, this is not how it is at all. <laughs> I am I am horribly unorganized. I have been my entire life. And I realized, and I'm, I just know, I realized maybe at the age of 17 that I'm unorganized. So I use tools to help me be organized. And I don't know that anyone in my life would know that I'm disorganized because I know that this does not look disorganized. I am aware. I use tools to help me. Um Scaling is a thing. This is this is how to be a real estate agent 101. I think of it as how to make an, a living, how to be able to pay your bills. Um, scaling is 201. It's a it's a different thing. There was one year that my GCI uh, 5x, whatever, is bigger than quadrupled. And the answer, of course, is people. You got to, even back to the dentist, you got to have a receptionist. You got to have teammates. You have to. I think of everyone on my team as business partners. I don't think that I'm in charge. I think that we're trying to get better on behalf of our clients because I do like the team aspect of real estate. I'm horribly disorganized and some people on the call would be like, he's really horribly disorganized. <laughs> it just doesn't appear that way for sure. Cause I noticed that, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say on your calendar too, like how, how how do you get all this on your calendar? Are you personally putting all these things on your calendar or, or is an assistant helping you? I do most of what's on the calendar, not so much showings. Um, uh, uh, one of the licensed uh, real estate agents that's a support uh, position often schedules the showings and puts them on all of our calendars, which is real cool. We have a licensed agent who works remotely, so she does anything that can be done from a computer uh, because she's full time and she's very good. And uh, one thing she does for all of us is schedule tours and put them on our calendar. And um, I, for the Team agents want everyone to live the life they want to live. I don't care if they're at the doctor or at drinking a beer. I ask them to block off their calendar so I don't, or Jamie doesn't schedule showings for them. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. You know, it's your money, so your time. But just let us know so that you don't get it scheduled an appointment. How many people are in college? This is a very common question. I have part-time agents. I have full-time agents. Not even everyone is licensed with Skyline. I have some time agents, meaning sometimes they work on the team, sometimes not. I do have salaried agents, um, not just 1099. Mm, I'm, I'm not big. I don't work across the country. I'm not doing thousands of transactions, maybe half a dozen. Depends on how you slice it. Did you have a question? We're going to keep rocking. Here's a question. So each day, do you have time block for all six gears or some days you have? So I'm probably going to lead Jen today six hours because I don't have appointments with buyers or sellers later today. So today I'll hang out for as long as anyone wants to hang out. Uh, and then the rest of the day, I'll spend lead genning. I told some people before I show, I hosted Thanksgiving and I showed two different buyers on Thanksgiving. 
and I've told this story a bunch of times and some people say, Jim, you're a workaholic, you need to work less and that's fine. I love what I do. So to me, it does not feel like work, which is kind of an awesome lifestyle. The point to class today is you have to lead gen and guess what? It is work for me too, even though I love what I do. I'm going to get to the way that I commonly tell agents who are new or want to expand their business, like golly, we're slowly getting there. My number one suggestion, we're like there right now and it absolutely is work. It is not easy. And uh, it, so going in reverse order, it's open houses. Open houses, let's see here, we are on a week. I, I gave you, I like referrals first because that's the end of my, combined with the gifts, I do events. Um, sometimes once a month, sometimes big ones, uh, twice a year. For the fourth year in a row, for the third year in a row, we are renting the entire Kraken practice arena in Northgate, just us, free food, drink, bring everyone you want. It's a huge hit with clients every single time. It's the fourth year we've done it. Um, the referrals we get after our big events uh, is extensive from one event. And the ROI, it's very expensive to rent the entire ice rink with the stands, unlimited food and drink. There are adults, so there's alcohol there. <laughs> it's not inexpensive. And it costs like this much versus how much it generates. Do not spend money if you're new, not on anything. Close some deals first, get better and the cleaning of the teeth so that when you start to spend money, whether it's on an event or a refrigerator magnet or an online lead, when that call comes in, you have a chance to close them. Get good at the other gears first before you spend money. I would just encourage anyone to like get their license. You got to pay for gas or whatever. And like you, okay, we're going to talk about it right now. Referrals, everyone you talk to. It's an easy script. You can modify it however you want. You think my script sucks? That's fine. If you want a referral, come up with your own. Practice it. Polish it. You can do it by yourself. I'm happy to do it with you. But say it so many times that when you get in the moment, oh, by the way, the first time you're going to freeze, even if you practiced it a hundred times. But just do it again and again and again and again and again. If you want to be a full-time real estate agent, if you want to be a full-time real estate agent for the rest of your career, I didn't say for the rest of your life because like I'm looking to retire, uh, you'll then be good at it. You'll be better at it. I love open houses. I hold as many open houses as I, as I can hold personally. Who did I just talk to? Like today, I held an open over the weekend and got some clients from it. We didn't know each other. I was thinking it in my brain and I didn't say, it. when's the right time for them to get reapproved? I'm going to say it again. Today's Wednesday. I met these people Sunday at an open house. It was at your place. Oh, okay. It was an open house. It wasn't a showing. And um, I have so much to say about opens. We're going to be near the end of the content when I'm done here. I have so much to say about opens. I hooked them. By doing what I do, which is teachable, you can do it too. They spoke to my lender yesterday. Talk about a buying signal. I do what I do. I don't make this up. Holding an open house is here or maybe here if I'm trying to sell the listing, which of course I am. And it is a not secret se industry secret that when you hold an open, your goal is to sell the listing, never say otherwise. But another goal is to pick up buyers. And I Picked up buyer Sunday, referred them to a lender because I was concerned about their approvability. And they talked to the lender yesterday. Guess what, y'all? We, we, well, they hadn't applied yet, but they reached out to her and they were going to apply last night. I'm going to be in the car with them like this week. That's not me saying that. That's them by them reaching out to the lender literally yesterday. Are you kidding me? Check this out. The reason I love open houses is because it can cost no money. And get a load of this. You want to be a full time real estate agent? You have nothing in escrow. I'm going to, if I lead you in six hours today, I work seven days a week. That's like over 40 hours. And today's a not busy lead gen day for me. If you don't, if you're not, if you can't prove to yourself, which a cool thing about real estate is we're our own bosses mostly, that you worked 40 hours a week, you're not a full time real estate agent. Check it out. 
You want to be full. You want to do 160 transactions. It's tough, by the way. Get a load of this. Hold 40 hours of opens a week. You can at least tell yourself, new agents, agents that want to do more business come up to me all the time. I'm putting myself out there, Jim. And I'm like, cool. Me too, by the way. How are you doing it? Because I can do one, two, three, A, B, C, how I'm putting myself out there. I can prove it to you. You can see it. You can see it on my calendar. Oh, and by the way, it works. How are you putting yourself out there? I don't close deals from social media posts. I'm the wrong person to talk to about social media. Some people might be the right people to talk to about social media. I've never closed a deal from it. The most common answer when I say, how are you putting yourself out there is social media posts. I'm the wrong guy for that. I've never had a Facebook account in my entire life. A company made one for me like five years ago or something like that. So it's no longer true. It is true that I've still never signed in ever. Yeah, there you go. Because this company does it. I don't know. People tell me all the time, good posts. And I'm like, really? People tell me all the time. You had a typo. I'm like, really? I don't know. <laughs> Social media is not up here. Get a load of this. You can open house 40 hours a week if you wanted to do more business or you wanted to lead gen because you're buying into what I'm saying. And guess what? You could do literally anything else while you're at the open. Because guess how many people are going to come in if you at the same property, which would be convenient, you know where you're going, you know where to put the signs, was the same property eight hours a day, five days a week. You can, there's not going to be a lot of people coming in is what I'm getting at. And you can still do everything else that you'd already be doing at home. Let's slow it down though, Jim, because that sounds awful. Says me. <laughs> I have specific methodologies by which I try to connect with a customer to turn them into a client in an open house. And I'm going to tell you what they are right now. I try ever so desperately hard to only hold opens with a home inspection. And I did tell you at the beginning of class, I'm running out of air, that we're going to be scripting. Here it comes. Hey, thanks for coming. I've got a copy of the home inspection for this house. Can I send it to you? I would love to see it. Great. What's your email address? I don't do sign-in sheets. What else do people do? I don't do sign-in sheets. <laughs> I've tried everything. I've been doing real estate for a long time. I like to think I study real estate. I go to some seminar. I hear something. I get excited about it. I try it. I've tried every methodology for capturing client contact information in an open house, and none of it has worked except for what I'm about to tell you right now. I don't even ask for their email anymore. And to be fair, I'm probably at as many transactions as I want to do. And I still hold open houses. I just told the story about this past weekend. I tell people, email me. You want the home inspection? Email me. Because that tells me if they're serious or not. I would encourage someone who wants to do more business, and I do too, maybe to try to capture. But the number of people who left Mickey Mouse open, you know, email, whatever, it's just a waste of time. Nobody says no to, I've got a copy of the home inspection. Can I send it to you? You guys believe that? That's not true at all. Are you serious? People say no. Uh, the most common no, hey, I've got a copy of the home inspection. Can I send it to you? Nope, I'm just a nosy neighbor. Has anyone ever held an open house? And I find it hilarious how many people I self-identify as a nosy neighbor. Can you do it? Will you do it with me? Hey, I've got a copy of this house's home inspection. Can I send it to you? Uh, I actually am just... Checking, checking the place out, live next door. Oh, cool. Uh, thanks for coming in. Um, when's the last time you saw what a home inspection covers? Wouldn't you like to see it? Just let you know what it covers or you think of like maintenance to keep up with. Even if you're going to sell your house in 20 years, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, I mean, I really have no interest in seeing. Cool. The, the number one demographic that says no when I offer a home inspection is the self-identified nosy neighbor. <laughs> you heard my script. Just take a look at it to know for maintenance. And sometimes people still say no, thank you, which she did. Most people don't. That it's called overcoming objections. If I get two no's, I don't go for a third. Sometimes people in sales say go for three no's. Uh, she just told me she's never going to work with me. So what do I need to do? I need to stop talking to her as quickly as possible if I'm there for work. I don't need to be rude about it. I'm not a rude person, but she just told me there's no, I was going to provide free benefit to her. Oh, by the way, you can do this with seller's disclosures. It works identical. 
just if you want to try my approach, which freaking works, don't hold a house that doesn't have a home inspection or seller's disclosures. Hey, I've got a copy of this home seller's disclosures. Can I send it to you? The most common thing there is, I'm sorry, what? Oh, hey, the state requires sellers to disclose in writing certain things. It's six pages worth of information. Let me send it to you. Hey, I don't even care about this house. I'm a nosy neighbor. Cool. I'm going to sell in 20 years. Cool. Don't you, when's the last time you saw what seller's disclosures were? If you're going to sell in 20 years, congratulations. Good for you. Don't you want to see what today legally the state makes you disclose? Oh, by the way, I go a little bit further when it's seller's disclosures. Oh, by the way, did you know you have to disclose a leak within the past five years? That might help you adjust your leak and or when you sell, but only the roof versus the basement. Do you see how I'm planting the seed of now I want to see what's on there? One's five years, one's not, one's not. When I do that one objection overcomer with home inspection or seller's disclosures, I get their contact information today, whatever, they email me. That's technique number A at an open house. Technique number B, easy peasy. If you've ever read anything about how to hold an open house, you've probably seen it. Have you seen one, two, three, four Main Street? You have to try to connect with the person. That is the name of the game. I do not like it when people aren't specific. How do you try to connect with a person? How are you putting yourself out there? What lead gen efforts are you doing? It should be, it, we should be able to touch it. You should be able to prove it to yourself, not to me, I'm not your boss. Hey, have you seen 1234 Main Street? It's similar. Open house here is over one o'clock. Here's a $5 Starbucks gift card or whatever cafe is nearby. Coffee on me. I'll see you there at 115. What did I just do? Oh, I turned them into clients. I, tur I turned a prospect. You guys know there's implied agency. Uh, 2024 changes aside. There's literal legal implied agency. If I show a, a client a home, that's not my listing. I have a stack of gift cards to the local cafe. The, I usually do two hour opens, not eight hour opens. The longest they could potentially wait is two hours, 15 minutes. Still coffee on me. I'll see you at one, two, three, four Main Street. Be specific about the house you pick, depending on which house you want to sell. Pick one that looks better. Pick one that looks worse. Probably should be similar to the subject property because if you pick one that's twice as expensive or half as much, it's not the house for them. Technique number eight, let me send you something that you don't have access to. You are instantly providing benefit, value. They already have an agent. I don't even ask. I know it's a question we're supposed to ask. I stopped asking people if they have an agent a decade ago, probably not a decade ago because everybody has an agent. There's freaking 40,000 in Washington. How many listings do we have in Seattle? Do you know? It's not 40,000, by the way. I don't care if you have an agent. Let me help. You, you want to work with your agent? Cool. Like I do stop, stop helping people if they are adamant that they're not going to work with me because I shift back to gear one. I move on to the next. Uh, here we go. Three methodologies to change someone from a customer or just a looky-loo to a client in an open house. Number A, let me give you something you don't have access to. B, have you seen the similar property nearby? This one may not be as popular with y'all, and I do it personally. And oh, by the way, it works for me personally to the tune of roughly $100,000. This one technique every year. This came from, let me tell you what it is, and then I'll tell you the story. I put on my open house flyers, ask me how to double Redfin's rebate. I am not a discount broker. I do not discount commissions ever. Have you ever heard someone say that before? Because they're lying. Everybody discounts. I never discount. It's true. The only time I rebate to a buyer or discount on the list side is when I think I'm increasing. If to close a sale, I have to do a rebate and or take a lower listing commission, I'll do it because it's more than zero. I've got lots and lots of scripts. It's more in this gear. List side is different. This is uh, geared towards buyers. I've got lots and lots of scripts. If you think you can close it without giving up commission, you should. Unless you want to be a discount broker, there's nothing wrong with that too. My goal is to be a world-class real estate agent in America, same as everywhere. You get what you pay for. That's my belief. However, real life story, Saturday, Sunday, two different $2 million homes. Saturday, east side, where are we? We're on the east side. East side, $2 million home, Sunday, uh, Magnolia, Seattle neighborhood of Magnolia, $2 million home. I connected well with the buyer who came in, prospective buyer. They bought the house with Redfin two days in a row. 
I got their name. I got their contact information. I looked up later, sold to the person I met at my open, wasn't my listing, bought with Redfin. This is a real life personal story that happened to me two days in a row, not even a Saturday and a Sunday in my career. Let's do some quick math. $2 million, what's the commission? That's what everyone says and it's half as much. What's the commission on a $2 million home? It's $120,000, 6%. Let's not lose sight of the size of the pie here. You're not wrong, of course. We would all say $60,000. Thank you for participating. To the buyer brokerage firm is $60,000. I have a spreadsheet. You can pull up yourself, if you're logged in, what Redfin's rebate is. On those two homes, the rebate was 10 grand. That's a pile of money. How much did I get when I didn't close with the buyers who came in that I connected well? So if the buy side commission was 60 grand and Redfin's rebate is 10 and I offered to double it, what's 60 minus 20? times two, because it was literally maybe back to back days. I have three hooks to try to close someone at an open house. Let me give you something you don't have access to. I'm providing value, whether we talk to each other again ever or not. Have you seen one, two, three, four Main Street? I'm gonna be your client and you don't even know. The only way that I go to the double Redfin's rebate is if I have failed to connect with them when it works, about half the time they say, I'm sorry, what's that now? They have no idea what I'm talking about. And I will, of course, still honor it because I put it verbally and I put it in writing. Or they took one of my flyers. It's a busy open house. Those don't happen very often anymore. And they call me because they do know what it is and they're interested. There are other techniques that you can use to try to convert a looky-loo into a prospective client at an open house literally Google it, you can see how specific I like to be. If you came to one of my opens, I might recognize you. But I would still do maybe all, maybe one of these things because it's what I do when it opens. And it works. If you were to try to do an open 40 hours a week, I actually would encourage you to do the exact same property. I would encourage you to do a condo. Here's why. Don't do it nine to five. Uh -uh. Do it 7.30 or eight to noon. Take a break. Do it three to seven. Here's why. Everyone who leaves for work is going to see you on their way out. Everyone who comes home is going to see you on their way in. They're going to say to themselves, A, what's wrong with this person? <laughs> B is the hardest working real estate agent I've ever heard of. I've never heard of a real estate agent who's trying to sell one property. They don't know 40 hours a week. When it's time for me to sell, who are they going to hire? How many times do they have to walk by you before they say, what are you doing? <laughs> Maybe have an open house sign and supplier so that they know they might stop and take one. While you're there, you can be doing whatever ever the hell heck else you normally would do, even if it's Candy Crush. At least you're proving to yourself that you're putting yourself out there. And when someone comes in, practice the script. The doubling Redfin rebate works, and I've had agents just blurt it out. Run! When someone's leaving, I double the rebate and it stops people from walking out, <laughs> gives you another chance to convert them into a client. It works. I, this, the, um, oh, Kevin and Monica are the people I met Sunday who talked to my lender Tuesday. See how hard I had to think about who they are because I'm not very organized. I did number A. I provided value to them. That's all that I did. I didn't do B. I didn't do C. Sorry. Yeah, Question. please. So you mentioned that you wrote that, oh, I'll double the ref and rebate yes. on the flyers. Yes. Wouldn't that then anybody who's walking see that on there? So even if there's you caught some- Great question, of course. One. Great question, of course. It depends how busy the open house is. If it's constantly one-on-one, -on -one, I control them. And I don't get them out if I think I'm going to get them on A or B. If it gets busy, I set them down, and then I would honor it for anyone I that came to that open. 
and I know where they came from. And if I did not ask them, and I, of course, would honor it. But if it, it's how opens have been for me, and I, I don't know how many opens I held last year, except I could look it up because it's on my calendar. I held a ton. I don't do 40 hours a week at an open house. I've had people do it. It works. It works at a condo, especially with the foot traffic in and out. You could still be doing whatever else you want. Get a load of this, y'all. If you want to try it, you don't have to do it 40 hours. Do it 20 hours. Oh, and by the way, and this is approaching a final thought. I have a couple more slides. We're okay-ish on time. Do it 20 hours. Do it 10 hours. Don't stop until it works. Or this is me. There's other ways to generate business too. One of my favorite for people that are new and or want to do more business is canceled, expired, for sale by owners. I don't do it. I'm real good at it or a less braggy way is effective at it. The scripts are simple. They're not easy. If you practice those scripts and then execute on game day when someone actually picks up, it'll work. I promise it'll work. I promise if you Google or whatever, DuckDuckGo, how to generate business, how to close people who come into open houses, there's other great ideas out there. This works for me. I teach classes anywhere from zero to four times a week. I have a decade, maybe seven years. I could tell you how many closes I had. Left. This is pretty straightforward. This is like flyers. I'm just going to tell you what this is because people always ask. And then I have the same as geo farming. You just visit retail banks, Bank of America, Chase, KeyBank. Ask to speak to whoever takes loan applications. Hey, you take loan applications. Do you, when you get a loan application, refer that to a real estate agent? This is one of my favorite scripts. Every good script, I say the same thing, no matter if the answer is yes or no. Okay, you do refer loan applications to a real estate agent. Do you have room in your stable for another referral partner? Yes, cool. Uh, no, you don't refer loan applications to a real estate agent. My name's Jim Pullen. Damn pleased to meet you. My close rate is 10 times the industry average. Think to yourself how much money you would have made if last year you closed 10 times more loans. The key to that script is to stop talking after I just planted the involuntary seed. Imagine how much more money you would have made last year if you closed 10 times more loans. <laughs> Jim Pullen, Dan, pleased to meet you. When they say they do refer, they don't have room for another referral partner, I say, give me your garbage. Sometimes people know what that means. Sometimes they don't. If they don't know what it means, I said, you know exactly. It's the loan applicant that you know can't buy a house. I am top 1% agent in America six, seven years in a row. I'm going to close your garbage. I'm going to create income from you from nothing. The loan application that was so bad, we all know what they look like, even though we're not lenders. So bad. They have so much debt. I'm going to, I'm going to close them. I'm going to work harder to close them because I'm going to create income for you. And when I do that... I expect to be your number one referral partner. And that works for me. It, I don't do it today because no lender has leads to hand out. So it's a waste of time, which we do have to adjust based on how the industry changes or whatever. That's fine. Uh, where is the folder with my, I have maybe one or two. Yeah, if you could please. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Three ways to convert someone from a looky loo to a prospective client. I like time blocking, time block, time off. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So check this out, y'all. Uh, let's do, yep. This is a commercial for you. This is a commercial, not for me. This is a commercial for you. I've said it twice now. Maybe I'll say it a third time. Uh, Zillow is the largest real estate portal in America. They're bigger than the next nine combined. They're doing a test run in their home market of Seattle. Don't know if you've seen it or not. They're calling it showcase and or featured listings. There are 20 allowed in the city of Seattle, two zero. I have five of them per month. Yes, please. 
Yep. Uh, we are on that topic right now after this commercial for you. I get five a month. It's one quarter of the entire market. I have one active right now because that's how many listings I have in the city of Seattle. If you have an upcoming listing in the city of Seattle, Zillow will spend 1500 bucks on marketing your listing. Photos, drone, video, twilight, 3D, the whole nine for free. And then the Zillow showcase is it shows up at the top, like period. Jamie has sent out on the needs and wants a handful of times. If you have an upcoming listing in the city of Seattle, I have to be on the listing. I want none of the commission. I don't, we'll have to work out with Skyline if there's additional fees or whatever, because I won't pay to be on your listing, but you will get a world-class marketing for free. However much you spend on photography, it's going to be better and it's going to be free. And then you also get number one prioritized search results. This is a commercial for you. They're going to waste. Um, when I took this screenshot, I don't have a date on here. Of the 20 in the city of Seattle, mine was the only one. So that's a commercial for you. The question was, how do you get a seller to conduct their own inspection? And that more directly is this slide. If you want to take a picture or whatever, this is so real life that I included property addresses. Maybe should have done MLS numbers. And we're now old enough that I need to buy, pay for another USA Today style infographic. This is about to get exciting for me. In the span of one, uh, three weeks, not literally to the day. This is all real life. Five, one, two, three, four, five, virtually identical homes. They were all built by the same builder at the same time. There's literally two floor plans. We had the worst one. It is extremely clear what market value of these virtually identical homes is. It's 1.5 million. I don't, don't like to ignore this seller got $10,000. And when I do a list presentation, I do have three stories that I use geographies and seller names of working hard to get an additional $8,000, $80,000. And then this story, because this is the one that I turned into an infographic, but $10,000 more to the seller is $10,000. What we do, we're not the only ones who have done it. We are barely scratching the surface. This class was largely buyer focused. There is a lot. I go to as many of these as I can because I'm trying to be a world-class real estate agent and learn as much as possible. I am not the only person who knows how to outperform the market. These houses are identical. Compass is on this. Keller Williams is on this. There are two Skyline property listings on this. Of course, it is not a secret that this one was mine. Every single time I meet with a seller, we craft a custom listing strategy designed to achieve their goals. Notice I did not say net the most money possible. That's not everyone's goal. The only way you can know what someone's goal is, is to ask them. And oh, by the way, you should ask them. These people's goal was to maximize the most uh, money possible. I recommended a home inspection. They bought into conducting a home inspection in advance. The market was a little bit different. And then I pay for all the marketing. I don't let sellers spend one penny on marketing. I pay for it myself out of pocket. I spend a lot of money because it routinely, in addition to some other things, it's not a secret, we just don't have time, I am an open book, I promise. I'm going to repeat my contact information. Some people know, real life, it results in higher sold prices repeatedly. And what do real, this is a, re, you have the addresses. You can look it up yourself. You can check my math. You'll see the Skyline listing, the other Skyline listing, Keller Williams, Compass. These people I could recommend to someone if I wasn't a good fit for them because they rock. I don't work to outperform the outperformers. I don't work to outperform the market. I work to outperform the outperformers. People listen to me when I talk, maybe because of me, maybe because of my experience, maybe because of my proven track record. I don't know. These people ask me for a commission discount. These people are friends of mine. 
And I told him, no, we're doing 6%. By the way, part of this, I attribute to 3% on the buy side versus some of those others had two and a half. Part of it, I attribute to that for real. I told my friends, I'm not going to discount my work for you. And you're going to be happy when we're done. The husband's name is Mike. One of these, it was one of these closed Monday morning at 8 a.m. And you, we all know there was no closing Monday morning at 8 a.m., right? It closed Friday. And it was Mark Clay. And he called me early in the morning because we were all watching them like a hawk because they all had four sale signs because they were all at the exact same time. And he said, did you see what it closed at? And I used some um, vulgar language because he's a friend of mine that swears a lot. I said, you know, yes, I saw it. And if you're, and he said, what's a lot of money? I said, if you're calling to ask if $205,000 is a lot of money, then like get out of town, man. And that's why I didn't discount. I knew that they wouldn't fire me for not discounting. So I would have thought that I was discounting, not increasing versus I knew they were going to hire me anyway. And you better believe they referred me all sorts of people. In fact, I need to reach out to them again. <laughs> When this happens, they refer me to everyone. This happens over and over and over again. Um, I got a question. What yep. do you spend on marketing? What marketing platforms do you use for your listing marketing? So um, the package that uh, Zillow, which owns Showing Time slash Showing Time Plus, interviewed me to come up with their, I forget what it's called, featured, whatever. I was one of, I'm sure, many agents across the country, but I do what they do, um, which I think I said earlier. Still photos, professional floor plans, 3D, drone, twilight, if the property uh, is a good fit for that. I do a dedicated website for every single property. This is not a brag. It's especially not a humble brag. It's a, I'm a big door guy. I own over a hundred websites and uh, their design. When I spend money, my goal is to make more than what I spend. So every single listing has a dedicated website that what? Has lead capture on it, 100%. Always. Uh, did I answer the question? 3D tour. I mean, it depends on the it depends on the property. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe is there a percentage of what you maybe? Uh, not really. A, a listing a listing last year, I lost money because I spent so much on marketing, and the person is going to buy with me too. So I hope to make it up there. But he got more than other comparable properties and did refer me to people. So like, I hope it's not a true loss for me, but on the listing itself, I lost money. Uh, it was a you know modestly priced, say $500,000, which means I spent more than 15. It sold. I mean, the worst is when it doesn't sell, which happens to me, same as it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at specific cases of websites where you uh, it's Google ads. I don't do Facebook ads, but it's PP pay-per-click. Don't spend money. Okay. I did go through, I went through all the slides. I had some notes for things that I wanted to make sure not to miss. Um, it's probably Q and a time though. Further Q and a time. What do you use for the property websites? Yeah. I think I know the answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate how I phrase that. Um, gosh. Yeah. Is it up on the screen? It is. I have used many. I'm not married to them. I got it right. Um, I don't know. If you go to any of my listings, hopefully you know how to search that. That's a gear three thing, right? Gear two to gear three. Can you search the MLS for expired gym pulling listings? There's most of the listings have some variation of this platform. And at classes like this, I often tell you as homework, if you wanted to, you should look at my listings. I think they look great. If you had some constructive feedback on any of my listings, I would love to hear it. How can I make them better? I use Rela HQ. There's an AI tool that I've been using that I've been sharing at every Skyline event that I've been talking at. I'm sure you would love to know what it is. I have a college degree in English and am still using this AI tool for the start of property descriptions. And then of course we edit it from there and it works okay. If um, someone can reply, I'll tell you, I'm not trying to keep it a secret. I don't know what it is. What more questions, thoughts? 
maybe I should summarize my presentation. Who do you use for these uh, gifts that you send once per month? That is through a company that contracts with a company. So the company is Fusion, which if you're licensed at Skyline, you've heard people talk about a lot. I like Fusion. I don't know who Fusion uses. And Fusion is very expensive. And I'm aware of that. If you, you do know Fusion, right? Scott, especially, is talking about Fusion a lot. It's very restrictive. It's also that, too. Mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself of three concrete take. I'm sorry that I, I would tell you if I knew. Fusion's the company that does that for me. Uh, the gifts are reasonably priced considering the quality that I told you about. And then it's for an entire year and it leads to referrals. So the fact that they're modestly priced, I mean, it's like a 10 X return on the referrals, which is insane. Spend a hundred bucks, get a thousand, spend a thousand bucks, get 10,000. Like, let me spend more. Um, I didn't write down my concrete takeaways. If I remember from the segments that I was trying to convey today, you got to lead gen 40 hours a week. You got to especially if you don't have anything in contract, because that means you're not doing any of the other stuff. If you're doing the other stuff, I do believe in a work-life balance, showing two buyers on Thanksgiving aside. Um, a good way to prove it to yourself is to time block it. I'm showing you my calendar. I, was like, I don't remember the third concrete takeaway. Maybe the way that I explained how I do open houses. It works. I can do it in my sleep because I practice it so much, which means when Kevin and Monica came in, it seemed like I'd done it a bazillion times before because I've done it a bazillion times before. Go time is when you're in front of a prospective client. Don't practice on them. Practice, practice, practice. Scripts was the third takeaway. Um, practice, practice, practice. If you're saying something to someone and it's the first time you've said it, mm, you're back over here. You're back over here, right? You're like, your chance of closing them is low. So when choosing open houses, do you try to focus like in a particular geographic area just so that you're mostly seen in that area? Or yeah, that's a good question. Um, not necessarily because I often look at my calendar and say, where am I going to be? I'm already out in the field doing a showing north, south, east, whatever. So let me find an open that's near there. I try to do it newer houses. Um, what I'm about to say, it doesn't matter. It, it does, of course, but what matters is doing it. Uh, Cameron, I wonder if he's paying any attention at all, said something in the like that I was going to say why I see most agents not make it. And it's because of lack of execution. So I do try to go to hold opens at houses that are new on market, because generally speaking, that's what you would prefer. And I have held opens this last year um, for homes that were listed more than 200 days. And I turned looky loos into clients at that. The key is not anything that I say about new, not new. It's doing it. And you don't have to do at all the same thing that I do. But if you try to tell me that you're trying to be a full-time real estate agent, you want to do more business, and I say, okay, let me provide some feedback to you to help you do more business. Tell me what you're doing. If you can't rattle off the way that I can rattle off, I was in an open house this day, I went to a meeting this morning, true story, 6 a.m. where I was lead gen. And I drove directly there from here. I got here at 9 a.m. because that's my drive time. And then I was here a little early for the meeting. If you can't tell me A, B, C, X, Y, Z, here's what I'm doing to lead gen, I'm not going to believe you, which is okay. Maybe you're newer or less new. I could be doing more is the truth. These are just some, this works for me. And uh, I don't know why I would give a commercial, but I'm hoping that Skyline lets me come back for 201, which is, it's different when you're making more money than it costs to run your life. We can do really cool things with our income and I'll even tease it. Not a trick question, true story. Does anyone know why Martha Stewart went to jail? It, it was insider trading. Oh, yeah. And uh, I noticed... Is anyone here a lender for movement mortgage? I noticed no lender participated in our class. Wall, wall, that's fine. We and lenders have literal, not a secret, insider information in real estate. And it's not illegal for us to use that insider information 
to our financial benefit. And we don't go to jail the way a very wealthy, powerful woman went to jail for the exact same thing. And so 201 starts to talk about instead of being 1099, pay yourself a salary, self-directed self -directed retirement funds, uh, lots and lots of cool stuff. I don't know if I'll get invited back. <laughs> Maybe if my fee stays the same. By, by, by the way, I am here and I am paying attention, Jim. So. Oh, okay. Is there what? What other questions and thoughts before we break? I have one. Um, I'm a brand new agent entirely. Um, retired military. Where should I start lead generating? I have no family nearby. Yeah, that's okay. Um. When I moved to Seattle, I knew no one. It wasn't that long ago. It feels like a long time ago now. Um, I, I have to echo earlier in the class, the only wrong way is to not do it at all. And then outside of where to go, I've got it right here. Literally, this is the best answer that I can give you. And for the sake of we're in Q&A now, maybe you just hold open houses 40 hours a week. If you tweak, if you practice my three things, you might come up with something better. And I would love if you would share it with me if you do come up with something better. But what I do works for me. I don't know that I fully answered the question. We're going to go to another question. Maybe we can come back to it. Not another question. Yeah. For him, I think that Great. if I were a VA, I would be definitely bank farming uh, in the area of closer to the base. Uh, and I think that I definitely use that in my open houses, maybe a little letter. All right. Uh, yeah, specialist, so something. Okay. Any door knocking at his open houses with a little letter that says, hey, I'm BA, blah, blah. Anyway, sorry. Just door knocking awesome. works. I've done it before. I could talk to you about it if you want to do it. Um, okay. It works. So, on that caveat, um, I just started this month. This is my first month in real estate completely. However, hey. I have been. Uh, running D and D sessions on base for the soldiers. So as soon as I actually get business cards, I can start handing them out. That is my prerogative. I live here in Bremerton, so I've got two bases that I'm hitting up. But I need to learn more about how the VA paperwork goes through because I don't I, think I'm allowed to say I specialize in home loans to the VA without that training. I was contracted by JBLM to uh, present to the once a week or once a month when they onboarded new soldiers. And it was like some monstrous number of people. And I never closed. I want to do that. I need yeah, to know yeah. how to get in that. I, I never closed a single one from it. I think I did it for two years, which okay. was a huge time and monetary investment. I never closed a single one. And I'm good at closing customers when they want to. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Thank you. We have two questions. Well, Cameron says top for let's see. Top producer training with Jim 201, February. Let's oh, great. Go, oh, great. Yeah, great. You know? Um, and then we have a question during open house, should we ask each one their contact information and how to follow up? I, I think, yes. A uh, common thing that I do is ask a customer, how frequently do you want to hear from me? I find in the gears going from two to three, that's helpful to not lose someone. You want to hear from me once a day? They send you properties once a month. So when do they want to hear from me? Is they're going to hear from me. It's kind of built into my, let me send you the, <laughs> well, it's built into the, let me send you my inspection or the uh, seller's disclosures. Um, what, what was the question? Uh, should we ask each one their contact information and how to follow up? I, I feel like that's asking for the sale. And um, why would you not? Why would you hold it open, be in front of someone and not at least try? And it's scary. I, I like that um, when I do these talks, as opposed to when I'm listening to someone, I'm a practicing real estate agent. You can look up my production. I do what's up here, and I can tell you it's scary for me today. It is. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you don't hold open houses. <laughs> I don't know. It can be scary. I, I um, For as long as I've been doing it, for as frequently as I do it, sometimes you're just not gelling with the potential client. You didn't make a connection with them. I'm down to number three. And uh, it can be nerve wracking to still ask for the sale, which doesn't mean do you want to make an offer on this house. But if you don't, you should practice overcoming that personal difficulty you have with it because you might as well stay home and not do open houses if you don't ask for the sale. 
I'm telling you, you won't have to do it very much before uh, you had a horrible pitch and they say yes anyway. I'm telling you, because I do it and it happens all the time. Usually my pitches aren't horrible. So what's your new script for the new buyer representation agreement that we have to get signed? I don't have one because I haven't done it yet. And um, what are your I, thoughts on it? Well, I did have, well, I've never used the buyer rep agreement ever. And like in the back, Eric's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> but it is a requirement. And now I have to revert this whole thing to it. I, uh, I, we, we are actively, we're currently, philosophy has not changed. I have read the law with an attorney. My perspective has not changed to eliminate any obstacle. It depends where it is to get a face-to-face. -face. The law does, I don't have the exact words, as soon as feasibly possible, which to me says I am okay having a face-to-face -face with someone and then getting them to sign it. That's as far as I've gotten in my methodology. I wasn't originally planning on using the Northwest form because I hate it. And then I found out that the my custom one sucked just as bad. So I'll probably use the Northwest multiple form. I do think I'm going to be complying with the law to get one face-to-face -face and then no further representation work before they sign, which is my plan. I just haven't done it yet. I, um, because for me, and I don't know if it's right, though it seems to comply with the law that uh, trigger the process that starts that ball rolling is the face-to-face. -face. And right. I, uh, I've got 6.4 in escrow that on January 3rd does not have me meeting my goals for myself this year, which means I need to adjust, which further shows you like it's January 3rd, right? Today's the third. Yeah. I'm adjusting this year's plan based on not enough in escrow today. And uh, I haven't had a first face to face yet this year. So I haven't used it yet. How do you market a new listing? Listing with open house, if there are already similar listings with days on market at 40 plus in the same community. The key to anything do what we talked about today, do what I do, do for sale by owner, cancel expires, do anything. The key, the difference between those who make it and not is the execution, it's the doing. And if you commit to yourself that you're going to start or continue, or enhance or whatever, there's a thought process in real estate that you need four lead gen platforms to make it. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that before. How many do you have? I've got six. There are others that I wish to integrate in and I have to fit it into my rhythm. I know I can, I can adjust my schedule. I know I can, but I can't currently, so I have to get better. But there's a thought in real estate that you need more than one way to the tune of three, which would be try, is not enough. But the to just stay true to Cameron's teaser, whatever, that was a cool graphic. Who made that graphic? Who made that Jim Pullen's class or whatever? That was Cameron. Oh man, it looks good. It does. To me, the differentiator was that an online question is yeah. doing. If you suck at it, do it anyway. Cause it because you'll get better at it. Back to literally back to we're coming full circle. We're getting close, maybe. If you're a dentist, you're a horrible at an open house or you're horrible at writing contracts the only way to get better is to do it so tell that you're going to do to get better okay can you share some script on i have a very long, long script it's one of the only ones that i have written down about distressed properties mm -hmm. cancel uh um uh pre-foreclosure foreclosure short sales bank owned I call that category distress. Mm -hmm. I started real estate in 2007. Right. Potentially the worst time in all of our lives to start real estate. I have considerable experience in distressed properties. Uh, whoever asks that, if you could contact me, I will not only give you the written script about distressed properties, I'll, it takes explanation and I'd be happy to do it. Jim at realestategym.com. It's kind of easy. You don't have to write it down. You had a question. Oh yeah. What's your team name? Well, I, I Northwest Partners Real Estate NWP Real Estate dot com, mm -hmm. and um, there's a Northwest Partners Real Estate firm. So I recently found out we shouldn't be using that name. Oh wow! Well. Well, don't well. tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the truth. But um, we, I am not very big on um, my cards. Have my photo because I, I don't like the whole everyone's in their photo. But I was taught that 
when you hand someone your card, you're saying, I'm not a criminal. And if you don't have your photo, I'm a licensed individual, I can represent you. And if you don't have your photo, it could be someone else's name. They look up and that other person has their license. Mm -hmm. So my photo's on my card. And many of the agents write deals without me being on it because I, I, we've known each other, some of us longer, some of us 90 minutes. And I don't know that I believe in like the technical thought of karma. Maybe yes, maybe no, but I do believe in put in the world what you want to get out. I try so hard to be an open book. It, I really, it was a joke. I didn't get paid to be here. Um, there are plenty of other things that I could have been doing as it pertains to work. And I'm here to try to make you guys achieve your goals. Like I believe in pushing forward together. I believe if I help someone on the team, maybe they're on salary, maybe because they want to be a world-class agent and need to pay bills. Uh, that person will better help a client than without my support. Um, I'm an open book, reach out. I, but the team name is not Jim Pullen real estate or whatever, you know, and, um, our email addresses, we all have name at realestategym.com. And I prefer when the agent uses name at nwprealestate.com because then it's not about me. That, that client who's putting their faith, their trust, whether they're buying or selling in one of the team agents, I like to think they're getting world-class support, but I would always be like, who's this Jim guy? And then when they meet me, they're like, well, all right. Then. <laughs> uh, can you please show how to use Word Logic to find the right? Yeah, so yeah, this is worth staying 30 seconds. This is not the class. The class is around two hours one on one. The question was, Jim, can you show core logic? And oh, I wonder if I can sign on on someone else's computer. I'm going to not give you the two hour class. If, if I can sign into the Northwest Multiple, we'll see. I'm going to show you the trick. There is a secret in real estate. The secret that no one says is you got to lead gen, y'all. It's the most important part. Here's a not secret secret. When you become so good at lead gen that you can't keep up with the business, that's when you hire an assistant. That's when you hire a buyer's agent. That's when you hire a list agent. The flow, I do think of it as a faucet, even though we're on gears. The flow is what unlocks making more and more money for even maybe a better work-life balance. And if someone wants to be a solo agent, like that sounds great to me too, I, you know, whatever. Do you have any recommended online online ads. I just feel so strongly that don't spend money until you have a chance to close them. Um, with the new auto login, we'll see if I know my password. <laughs> Bing! Check this out, y'all. This is the answer to the question in a 30 second format. What? Can you hear? Golly. Yes. <laughs> Two things to show you, and I love that this is real life. You. It's okay. Are you videoing or picturing? Video, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. I just didn't want to give it away. No, no, you're good. You, 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 you. Sign into your whatever and tell me how many listings are in the concierge. Part of the two hour class is don't use it. Don't use the concierge. Think of the gears. Once you get a client, Get their criteria. It's a skill. You could be on the, you are zero to 100% good. Setting up a search in the MLS. I've used virtually every big CRM out there. I've used them. I use the MLS because it's the direct primary source. If you turn the concierge on, I want you to sign in into your MLS and tell me how many people are in the concierge. Because when I, it's the first time I did today, except I know I signed in earlier today. I have failed two people five times, which is not me being a world-class real estate agent. I strongly recommend turning the concierge off and shifting back to gear one. You got that person all the way to gear three. You got, well, gear two, you got their criteria. I think of it as it's on them now to reach out to me. Jim, you found a the one because they use my vocabulary once I explain it to them. Let's go. So I have so many searches set up. Okay, it's the holidays, whatever, that my goal, my plan, by constantly pivoting, pivoting back to gear one, constantly pivoting back to gear one, where am I going to find the next client today, right now, who wants to buy or sell today, right now? Because we all need and or want someone who wants to write a contract today. I pivot back to gear one, and when I use the concierge, I'm not sending them listings. 
And y'all, like you sign in, maybe you don't use the contract. I see agents all the time with hundreds. This is okay, except I failed two clients five times. Here's the trick to being good at the MLS. This is, I do have a two hour class for this. You want to do it. We just got to find two hours for me to sit down with you. Check it out. I strongly recommend if you haven't already, single family general. I wish someone had told me to do that when I started in Seattle and it's too late now. I'm not even going to talk about why. You should use single family general. This is the key to being good at the MLS. These are custom fields. And if you've got more than me, I'd like to take your class on how to search the MLS. Do you see how many I have? Here is, here is the two hour class in obviously longer than 30 seconds. Find the item that the buyer wants. Jetted tub, hot tub, spa, whatever. That's ridiculous. Don't do a search with a jetted tub. There's a field in the MLS for a jetted tub. Is that hot tub or bathtub? Yeah. <laughs> right there. Interior features, that to me sounds like a bathtub that has jets. Right. You have to, and I tell people, I'm going to keep your criteria pretty vague. We can't do the two-hour class on how to be good at this. We just can't. I tell people, I'm going to keep your criteria. You tell me 300 max price, I'm going to do 330. You should, I do this so they don't get mad when I send them 330. I'm not looking to push you up in price. I want you to tell me it's not the right one. Oh, and by the way, if it's listed at 310, we're going to get it at 295. But I do that to keep the criteria vague enough. I target six to 18 listings on an active search because I know if it's between half a dozen and a dozen and a half, if I leave it there with no concierge, they're going to hear from me minimum a couple times a week on the auto emails. Mm -hmm. The trick is the CoreLogic software sucks. For example, you would think if you wanted to only see properties FHA that you, oh, we're not, we're a little off the screen. I don't know why. Right. This field is called financing and we don't use it. I leave it on my search to illustrate to you the software sucks. You have to find the thing and find it on one listing to then know what custom field to put on. You put the custom field on here at the top, right here. And as long as we're talking about it, the Northwest multiple field for financing is called potential terms. You never would have figured that out without me telling you. I can't tell you what every field is. The trick is find a listing that has whatever it is you're looking for, like FHA. And if you were to find a listing just by browsing around, you then look to the left and the Northwest multiple calls that FHA term potential terms. Then you know, add the custom field potential terms. And you see how many custom fields I have. I don't even have half of them. Yep. Yep. Going back to your comment regarding telling your client I'm purposely going to leave this big yeah. and wide, is that also why you're comfortable with allowing concierge, turning off concierge? Because sometimes there are some crappy listings. In Absolutely. Places. So my goal is six to 18. So they do hear from me. If it's less than six, it might, go, it might be a month before they hear from me. And that's not enough to hold on to someone. The gears don't talk about retention at all, right? It just talks about moving people along. Um, I am, I'm good at searching in the MLS. So I know how to eliminate the crappy ones. And there's a variety of ways to do that. I only switch people to the concierge after the second time they tell me I'm sending them crap and it happens. And I'm usually able to get across the line one time, Jim, you're sending me nothing like what I'm looking for. I'm usually able to adjust to leave the concierge off. And then after at the risk of losing them because I feel like if they tell me a second time you're still sending me crap that's when I switch into the concierge and custom curate and I I try to stay on top of that because I see it as a literal professional failure for Kathy and another girl's name who I forget she was just up on there dang it buddy uh what do you write in the recurring message for your saved auto email oh, I don't I don't the only time I customize the message at all is when I'm um sending a specific list not a saved search that's the only time I customize the message. Why? The name of the game is to do. It's to execute. I don't care about the custom message. I'm sending hundreds of people listings. Mm -hmm. So I have lots and lots and lots and lots of things that I cut and paste in emails or um, texts. I text from a computer so I can cut paste real quickly on a computer. And uh, I don't customize the 
emails from the MLS. I customize them in terms of the uh, body, zero. Whatever the default is, that's what I use. And guess and guess what? It would be better if I did. Uh, um, yeah, that goes back to the whole like I just I just don't because I go back to gear one. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I set up the search. It's on them to call me now. And that's not true. Of course, I follow up with people, but I always just go back to gear one. And the quickest way for me to go back to gear one is to use the default. It's awful, I'm sure. What CRM is your favorite? I don't have the, the, the only right answer is the answer that everybody says the best CRM is the one that you use. I've used them all. I don't use any probably currently. I was on Brivity with an I, two eyes for the longest time because the um, automated texts was the best. I've used conversion. I've used commission incorporated, which most people call sync. I currently use HubSpot and love HubSpot. HubSpot is free. Um, I use around 20 software platforms and I don't have a list of them for me to rattle them off to you. HubSpot is free. It, the reason I use it 100% of the time, I don't think anyone on the team uses it, it, becomes, it comes with free email tracking. Get a load of this, y'all. I send a client an email. They have work. They have soccer. They have ballet. I get a notification on my phone when they open the email at 6.30. I call them at 6.30. And it's a mystery. They're like, hey, I was just getting ready to do some real estate work. And I'm like, oh, imagine that. I sent you the email at 8 a.m. Great. <laughs> HubSpot. It's literally free. You can pay for it. I'm currently using Chime, which just rebranded to Lofty. They're all the same. You got to use it. I don't really use any of them the way that they're designed to be used. That's the truth. I don't use I don't use CRMs. I, 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 use, I use note taking only. I've used Lion Desk. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I've used it real life personally. Sierra. Um, I saw recently has a book a tour in their CRM and mine doesn't. And I'm like, why doesn't every CRM have the ability? Here's a listing book a tour with Jim seven o'clock and it cross references with my schedule. So if lion desk doesn't have that today, Sierra does not I don't use Sierra either. Mm -hmm. What else we got? I don't know how, but I talked for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausting. Uh... I am going to hang out, but we're at the end of the two hour time. Thank you, Skyline, for having me. Thank you. Hey, oh. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, contact me if anyone has further questions, thoughts. I'll hang out for a little bit here afterwards, anyway. Well, thank you. Yeah.